This episode has been brought to you by FlowState, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. So as I discover new tools by streaming every single Sunday, I'm looking for fun ways to condense and compress everything I've learned in those two hours in an attempt to basically inform you, inform myself or what else is out there and what good things they're doing is. Every tool is going to have its weaknesses and its strengths. So if you're looking for one tool to do everything, I'm sorry to say you're not going to find it. So by looking at other tools, we can say, well, that tool is good for this and that tool is good for that. And that's what this whole series is all about, is just understanding the strengths and weaknesses to all of these different tools and where they shine. So I'm here just to inform you what I think they're good at. And it's up to you to make that final decision on if you think that is good or that is bad. So here is basically a roundup of what I think versely is great for. The first thing is quite frankly the, the fact that it uses Tailwind right out the gate. Tailwind is a utility class framework where if you want something to be displayed block you'll give it a class of block as an example. It really speeds up prototyping which I guess is another um, impact of, of using Tailwind is that you can quickly prototype things and change things. So you're not worrying about reusable classes, you're not managing all of that stuff and it's becoming clear to me that that Webflow is really the only tool that's leveraging classes. Now it does confuse the interface a little bit because if you're not familiar with Tailwind then by having a drop down that has a, a measurement value of TW and then the certain numbers are like one, uh, three, six and whatever it might be a bit confusing but again once you realize it's Tailwind you're off to the races. The next one is that under the hood it uses Vue and it gives you deep integration with the raw code that's happening under the hood. You can click the code button and just edit the code as you see fit. What I loved about Pine grow is that I can use the no code interface if I want to but if something's not working or if something's just playing up then I can access the raw code. This was something I've always loved about no code tools ever since Dreamweaver and it, it sparked my interest to actually learn the code because the no code tools aren't perfect. They have bugs and the things are doing stuff that doesn't make sense or you want to understand it. It encourages you to then understand what is going on. My, my lecturer has always told me in university that by understanding the code, it gets you out of sticky situations. And without realizing it now, it, that probably spurred on the majority of my career. Now I need to figure this out with the founder because we've been chatting on, on Twitter. Um, I don't know, I think it's using actually using React, but he's allowing you to write view code because it just makes more sense from a HTML perspective. Anyway, I digress, but the point is, is that once you understand Vue, you can then start playing around with manipulating the code. And then of course, on top of that, you are actually given access to the code, which I think is fantastic. And the third reason is the founder himself. I mean, we're at a point now where Versely is relatively small, but he is insanely responsive. You just jump on Twitter, ask him a question. And after the stream, I know I'm in a bit of a privileged position because I'm broadcasting his tool and I'm, you know, somewhat of an influencer when it comes to no code tools. He implemented a bunch of stuff that I had issues with that he thought he could have done better by just observing the UX. And that's, you know, as a side note, it's great to observe people using your website, using your apps because you encounter them interacting with your application in ways that you, you wouldn't even interact with them with. So you can spot those bugs. I digress, but he's extremely responsive. And I think this is a true benefit to jumping on this tool early, that if you have an issue or if you want, you want something, then he's able to fix them. As an aside to the fact that he's so responsive and the, the tool is so early in its days, it's really trying to basically ride the coattails of, of Webflow, seeing where they, go, where they go wrong and what they could improve on, and then implementing that on his tool. So again, really it's a community effort. It's a, it's a founder thing, similar to what I said about Framer. It's really good to jump on these tools early so that you can have an impact and you can shape the tool the way that you want. So let's just round off this episode by saying a couple of ways that I think this tool can uh, benefit or improve on. So the UI itself was not as intuitive as I'd like. I, I fumbled around a little bit, not as much as I fumbled around on Wix Studio, I must add, but the, the UI and UX I think could do with improvements. So I think Vulkan needs to bring on some UX or UI designer to really 
rethink and, and reinterpret the user interface because there's a lot going on and you need to provide an intuitive interface to do so. So I think that's one way it can do a lot better. Um, the other way, I think, again, in the same sort of vein, bringing on a few more people to to scale the applications i don't we've already had a chat about vc funding definitely don't think vc funding is the way to go it's an absolute bloodsucker of an industry i i don't agree with it whatsoever but ultimately by bringing on a few more people getting a few more perspectives and whatever i think they yeah, vulcan can scale that app and uh, and and make a much better tool so i, I do really do think it's got a lot of a lot of potential uh, versely a few more tweaks here or there a few more years uh, building the app and i think it could do too great and you could be part of that journey and you can help shape the tool i mean again just to sum up i think it's really good for marketing websites um, because you've got access to the back end code, well, not the back end code, but you've got access to the, the, the general before the HTML is generated because of uh, view and all the rest of it. Um, you've got a lot more control to make a really good website. The whole theming thing, I'm kind of going off piece right now. The whole theming thing is really great. I think theming or templating is really coming down to kind of headers and footers, components, uh, defining your colors and systems and, and fonts and, and things like this. Uh, having that can be a very powerful system if with a bit of foresight and a bit of planning, that sort of technology can really benefit you. It's just a bit boring and it's just a bit you know, a lot of designers just want to get their hands in and start designing. They don't want to have to do a lot of prep work. But I do think that's the way that no code is going. Like I think designers are thinking a lot more methodically about their design process instead of just being artists and just throwing stuff on the screen. Oof, I'm going off piste, I'm going off piste. Yeah, I think it could, the tool itself and the team itself, I'm not sure how many people are behind it at the moment, but it does feel like it's a solo effort. So I think bringing on a couple more people few more perspectives, I think you could be on to a winner here. So I think that about wraps it up. Give Versely a go. I strongly recommend broadening your horizons and just learning new tools and, and get excited about different things that are going on in the industry. Let me know what you think uh, Versely is good for, how you would use Versely, or how it compares to Webflow, because of course there's a Webflow and Code channel, whether you think there's things that Webflow could bring to Versely or vice versa. Let's start a discussion about this stuff because it's all really exciting. It's good to see movement going on in the, in the community. Anyway, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, happy no coding. <laughs>